When you think of the Roman Empire, you think of ancient Rome, you think of Western Europe, you think of people in, I don't know, togas and Romulus Italians. and Remus, Italians, etc. But the height of the Roman Empire, at the height of the Roman Empire, the empire extended from Western Europe, so Great Britain, France, Spain, Portugal, etc., all the way into the Middle East. Turkey was a part of the Roman Empire. Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, Lebanon, Palestine were all parts of the Roman Empire. Egypt, Tunisia, Libya were all parts of the Roman Empire. And the portion of the Roman Empire that was outside of Western Europe and in what we now know today as the Middle East and Asia was larger and more prosperous than the Western part of the Roman Empire. So what happened is during the reign of Emperor Constantine, he splits the empire into two, the Western part and the Eastern part. And then he moves the capital from Rome to a new city that he builds in between Europe and Asia called Constantinople, which we now know today as Istanbul, which is in the middle of Turkey in a Muslim country. What year country. was that? Oh, I can't remember the year, but <laughs> you can Google that, right? But <clears throat> what's interesting about this then is that the capital of the Roman Empire is Turkey in Istanbul, in what we now know today as a Muslim country. And even during the time of the Prophet wasallam, he has a Sahaba called Suhaib al-Rumi, who comes from Syria area, like Sham. But that area was known as Rum to them because it was a part of the Roman Empire. Anytime they spoke about the Romans, they're speaking about people who today would probably describe as Arabs or Middle Eastern people. But that was, in the classical world, considered the Roman Empire and considered the heart of the Roman Empire and the most prosperous part of the Roman Empire. And then gradually the Western Roman Empire fell and became different countries and nations, which grew into what we now know today as the Western nation states that we have now. But the Eastern Roman Empire continued which we now know as the Middle East, basically. We now know as the Middle East, and they call it the Byzantine Empire. And this is why semantics is so important, because when you call it the Byzantine Empire, you disassociate it from being the continuation of the Roman Empire, and you associate it with something completely different, when really we have to take into consideration that the majority of the Muslim world today, especially in the Middle East and North Africa, Egypt, uh, all these countries that I mentioned, were considered Rome. They were considered part of the Roman Empire, Turkey, Egypt, all of these places. And then not only that, but what's even more interesting is that as Islam rises, all of these territories that were formerly parts of the Eastern Roman Empire or just the Roman Empire are absorbed into the Khilafah. Sayyidina the Umar bin al-Khattab, the Caliphate. So Sayyidina Umar bin al-Khattab, the second successor of the Prophet wasallam, takes Egypt during his time. He takes Sham, he marches into Jerusalem and he creates a pact with the Christians there and the Jews there so that they can live under Muslim protection and they continue to practice their religions under Islamic authority. The whole region then becomes Arabized, Islamicized, but that is the remnant of the Roman Empire. But the Roman Empire continues in Constantinople, so in Turkey, that continued that area, all the way until the 1400s, they are considered as Romans still. And they call themselves Romans. The leader is called the Caesar of Rome in 1400s. And then what happens in the 1400s? 1453, Muhammad al-Fatih, who is the emperor of the Ottoman Empire or the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire, takes over Constantinople. And Constantinople becomes Istanbul and it becomes a part of the Ottoman Empire. But the Ottomans and Muhammad al-Fatih being the emperor that takes Constantinople takes on a new title, Kayseri Rum, the Caesar of Rome. And he says this Ottoman Empire is a continuation of the Roman Empire. So if we look at history in that perspective, that means that the Roman Empire began in Rome and continued all the way until the last Ottoman emperor who passed away in or who was a uh, the his empire was ended in 1929 mm -hmm. making it the longest running empire ever because the ottomans considered their empire a continuation of the roman empire mm. and then that also means that the majority of the roman empire the majority of the roman empire 
becomes what we now know today as the Muslim world and the Middle East. And it's funny you say that because I was telling you earlier that, that, that America is stat padding the Roman Empire, making it like <laughs> a, it was a Western European phenomenon. It began as a Western European phenomenon, but it ends up as a Middle Eastern and a Muslim phenomenon. Yeah. The Roman Empire becomes completely absorbed absorbed into the Muslim world. And most of the countries today that we consider the heartlands of the Muslim world were once part of the Roman Empire. Yeah, Stavros, one of my favorite comedians, he's from Baltimore, Maryland, so mm. I love him. Uh, he was He's Greek and he was talking about when he went and visited Greece for the first time, he was like, man, they're loud, they're hairy, they love olive oil, they are basically Arabs. <laughs> they have nothing to do with Western Europeans. Exactly. So I think it's so interesting and that's why I think semantics and re-evaluation of history is so important. The fact that after the move from Rome to Constantinople, because of the tension between East and the West, that the continuation of the Roman Empire is renamed the Byzantine Empire, it's a ploy to disassociate them from that history even though that is the continuation of that history because it's hard to admit that mm, the roman empire became muslim hmm. whereas the roman empire became muslim and from the 1400s the people who were called the emperors of rome were the ottoman sultans yeah and that conspiracy i mentioned to you about the western roman empire becoming the catholic church becoming the catholic church yeah. i talk about all of this in the new book islam and the making of the modern world oh man 